I'm going to be exploring what we can learn about Kyrgyz history today, specifically Kyrgyz history in the late Soviet era through fiction. A work of art or fiction can be a source of historical information, but my prime interest today is understanding a work of art as a compact, complex reflection on the historical context from which it emerged. In other words, we're going to be taking a piece of historical fiction and reading it as a meditation on the historical and cultural ground um, that it inhabited or in which it was situated. I'm going to be looking today or focusing today on Chinggis Aitmatov's um, short story, Jamilia, a work that was written in 1958. And my prime interest is its understanding of ethnicity in the Soviet context in which it was set. Atmatov wrote Jamilia at the beginning of a renaissance in Central Asian literature in the Soviet era. And this involved authors and writers um, attempting to understand the meaning of ethnic history and identity. There was a proliferation of novels in Uzbek, Kyrgyz, and Kazakh over the next decade and a half, in which authors attempted to come to terms or make sense of uh, the significance of the ethnic past in Soviet civilization. As I noted in the video lecture on Abraham Zon's Kyrgyzy, ethnicity was a matter of great importance in the Soviet era. It was a key category in the organization of the Soviet state and in its governance of Central Asia. The regime carried out some of its most extensive ethnic experiments in this region. Um, in the mid-1920s, the Soviet state in collaboration with indigenous actors, sought to rework the immense historical and human diversity of the region to form more coherent ethnic groupings. This process was termed the national delimitation. It involved transforming a complex cultural landscape into a neater ethnic map. Um, this was a complicated, messy, and contested process. Soviet authorities and indigenous actors struggled to come to terms with the bewildering complexity of the region and with how to take so many diverse paths and form more coherent ethnic and national categories from them. The renaissance that Aitmata was a part of was in part um, a reaction to this process. It was an attempt to make sense of the whole matter of assorting human lives into more rigid ethnic categories. It was an attempt to understand what ethnicity meant in late Soviet Central Asia. Jamili also reflected the forms and concerns of social realism. Social realism was the official art form of the Soviet state and necessitated efforts to try and predict and create models of what a new socialist society might look like. It also involved drawing very stark contrast between the way things were and the way things ought to be in a new socialist civilization. In the context of Central Asia, this involved depicting and enumerating the survivals that stood in the way of the evolution of the Soviet experiment in the region. Survivals was a Soviet term for the quote-unquote primitive forms of a culture that prevented its development and progress. Survivals in the Soviet lexicon um, were the old traditions that held the culture back. Jamilia can be read as a very typical work in this genre. It depicts a young, intelligent, and independent Kyrgyz woman trapped in a Kyrgyz culture that requires women to be dutiful and obedient. Um, she is the product of a bride kidnapped, married to a man she barely knows, and who seems to have little affection or love for her. Much of the story revolves around her infatuation with a young Kazakh man named, named Danyar, who is able to show her that a larger and more nuanced world um, exists beyond the confines of her village. Um, the work is a story of a young woman who comes to realize the limitations of Kyrgyz traditions and the manner in which they circumscribe her existence. At the same time, however, it's possible to read Atmatov's story as something less simple or more specifically 
to see it as a work of art that used the conventions of social realism to reflect on the meaning of ethnic identity in Soviet civilization. The village and the world that Aitmatov depicts in Jamilia are Kyrgyz, but they are also recognizably Soviet, or distinctly Soviet. It depicts what Kyrgyzstan looked like after its nomadic lifeways were upended by the collectivization of agriculture. This was a process that had forced previously nomadic groupings in both Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan onto collective farms, where they were required to fulfill quotas in service of Soviet industry. The broader world that Jamilia encounters through Danyar is also not an ideal Soviet civilization of development, progress, and modernity, but rather something that is recognizably ethnic as well. Danyar is a gifted oral poet, a tradition with deep roots in Central Asian history, and is able to sing very beautiful evocations of the steppe, its culture, and its heritage. The words of his songs are focused on ethnic peculiarities, the flora and fauna to be found in the steppe the Kyrgyz inhabit, and the distinctive features of their topography. Um, Daniar also sings in a way that blends Kazakh and Kyrgyz traditions without erasing them or without diminishing either. The narrator asserts that Daniar's oral poetry is an art that resembled neither Kyrgyz or Kazakh melody, but drew into itself the, all of the best melodies of both peoples and in its own way, wove them into a single inimitable song. What I'm suggesting here is that Aitmatov's Jamilia was his attempt to understand what Kyrgyz culture looked like prior to its being mapped, delimited, and defined in Soviet civilization. It was his effort to understand what had been as opposed to what was. It was also Aitmatov's attempt to assert that his culture and his heritage were something more than the bounded, circumscribed categories that had been defined in Soviet science. Jamilia suggests that Kazakh and Kyrgyz traditions are more complex in the histories and geographies they had been confined in, and points to an ethnic world that is far too nuanced to ever be fully represented in the ethnic taxonomies and hierarchies of Soviet civilization.